In this module, you will learn about the definition, dimension, and causes of land degradation, sustainable land management practices, abbreviated to SLM, barriers for SLM adoption and gender concerns, instruments to incentivize SLM and necessary action on different levels. These include the International Policy Framework of Action Against Land Degradation, under the United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification, the Land Degradation Neutrality Policy Framework, and the UN Decade on Ecosystem Restoration from 2021 to 2030. If you want to deepen your knowledge on land degradation and sustainable land management, further information is provided in the script on this module and links are provided at the end of this presentation. Beginning with some definitions, the definition of land degradation as defined by the United Nations is a reduction or loss of the biological or economic productivity and complexity of rain-fed cropland, irrigated cropland, or range, pasture, forest, and woodland. Soil degradation is defined by the physical, chemical, and biological degradation processes acting upon the soil and impacting soil resources and environmental quality, as well as human well being and livelihoods. Some brief words on the dimension of land degradation. During the past decade, several studies and reports have altered the perspective of society's perception of land degradation that is the loss of soil productivity. The ELD value of land report of 2015 concludes that worldwide, 52% of land use for agriculture is moderately or severely affected by land and soil degradation. And according to an IPBES 2018 report, more than 75% of the Earth's land area is substantially degraded, undermining the well-being of 3.2 billion people. Loss of soil productivity. According to Nagoya 2016, the total global area affected by declining soil productivity over the last 30 years is around 30%. See the map included in this slide. Over 10 million hectares of arable land worldwide are degrading every year. This is equivalent to an area roughly one third the size of Germany. The UNCCD indicates a higher figure of 12 million hectares per year. There are several recent studies on land degradation and you can find more details of these uh, in, in the attached links to the documents. Now turn into the causes of land degradation. According to the IPBES 2018 report, the underlying drivers of land degradation are the high and rising per capita consumption, amplified by continued population growth, the high consumption lifestyles in most developing economies combined with rising consumption in developing and emerging economies, unsustainable levels of agricultural expansion, natural resource and mineral extraction, and urbanization. And finally, the growing demand for food, fodder, fuel, and raw materials. There are multiple causes of land degradation. In the following pictures, these include deforestation, salinization, and soil erosion. There are multiple drivers causing land degradation. These are listed on the left-hand side of the following table. They include proximate drivers, which are more related to the land manager, and the line causes, which are more distant from the land management, and natural and anthropogenic causes. To develop solutions to land degradation, it is important to categorize them. In this slide, we list the categories of land degradation. These include soil erosion by water, soil erosion by wind, the chemical deterioration of the soil, 
the physical deterioration of the soil, biological degradation, which is the reduction of vegetation cover, and water degradation. The loss of environmental services. Land degradation negatively affects the provision of ecosystem services. Ecosystem services are depicted in the figure accompanying this presentation. There is another module that goes into further detail on this. But the provision of uh, ecosystem services affects things like water availability, the recharge of groundwater, productivity, habitats and biodiversity, and carbon sequestration. Land degradation also negatively affects food security, the resilience to climate shocks, and it causes further negative environmental effects in the region. And finally, it is linked with migration, hunger, and poverty. Land degradation is also associated with an acceleration of climate change. Land degradation is a major contributor to climate change. While climate change itself can exacerbate the impacts of land degradation and reduce the viability of some options for avoiding, reducing or reversing land degradation. Important to note that after the oceans, soils act as the biggest carbon sink in the biosphere. That is, there is more carbon in the soil than in the atmosphere and the Earth's vegetation combined. All greenhouse gas emissions generated by human activity could in fact be offset by an annual increase in 0.4% in the global amount of soil carbon. Some words on Sustainable Land Management Practices, or SLM. SLM is a solution to halt and reverse the above-mentioned degradation trends. SLM practices are those that serve to maintain ecological resilience and the stability of ecosystem services. SLM does not refer to a single method or practice, but rather is a portfolio of possible technologies, practices and approaches to land management. SLM involves all relevant and affected stakeholders and their needs in a participatory manner. As for categories of land degradation, there are categories of sustainable land management. There are basically four groups. These are one, agronomic measures, two, vegetative measures, three, structural measures, and four, management measures. There are multiple benefits of sustainable land management. Sustainable land management has proven positive socio-economic, ecological, economic and institutional benefits. For example, we can expect higher crop yields, diversification of crops, high value market produce, increased household income, improved soil health and biodiversity, increased water holding capacity and groundwater recharge, increased soil organic matter, and less erosion, and increased resilience to climate change and extreme weather events. Alongside this comes higher carbon storage. And at the societal level, we can expect improved organizational structures and local governance systems. As with all interventions, there are barriers to the adoption of sustainable land management. These include the fact that many SLM practices are investment or labor intensive, particularly if you're building things like terraces, laying out stone lines, spreading uh, weirs for water, etc. The economic returns are not always immediate, but rather they occur in the medium to long term. Agricultural service providers and extensions often focus on short-term gains and neglect sustainable soil and resource management. This is often the result of a lack of know-how. There are weak tenure security and limited access to finances, inputs and machinery. And finally, there are social and cultural barriers to 
implementation of some innovations. For small-scale farming, the gender dimension has taken on increasing importance. Less than 15% of agricultural land is held by women globally. Many lack or are denied rights to the land. This discourages women from investing time into sustainable land practices. Integrating gender aspects in the planning, design, implementation and evaluation of projects and investments in SLM is thus very important. The ultimate goal should be to reduce gender inequalities and ensure that men and women can benefit equally from any intervention. The adoption or implementation of sustainable land management usually requires incentives. Unfortunately, there are a lot of disincentives that prevent or divert investment into sustainable land management so that a change of framework conditions is needed. Positive incentives should catalyze a large-scale and enduring adoption of soil protection measures and sustainable agricultural practices. They should ideally be effective beyond the immediate intervention area of government or donor-funded projects. Only a certain combination of different instruments might create an enabling environment. For example, you may need formal policy, informal or social, technical knowledge and know-how, and or private sector instruments as part of the incentive process. Some of the factors necessary to promote sustainable land management at the local level include ensuring access to land, especially for young entrepreneurs and women, facilitate the definition and implementation of locally accepted regulations for the use of land and natural resources, put SLM high on local agendas and include them in budgets, increase the awareness on environmental issues, encourage farmer to farmer visits and local prizes and awards for sustainable land management, provide effective accessible extension services and knowledge transfer, enhance community collaboration to reduce labour intensity and conduct participatory land use planning and harmonize intersectoral planning. Some necessary action to promote sustainable land management now at the national level includes ensuring tenure security and legal rights, creating a favoring regulatory framework that includes standards and guidelines and the possibility to conclude informal user agreements, facilitating access to finance and or incentives, for example, credit, subsidies, inputs, carbon payments, payments for environmental services, grant schemes, and taxing privileges, increasing awareness through mass media, and setting up effective and accessible extension services and know-how transfer including re-education of extension workers, farmer-to-farmer -farmer exchanges, information and communication technologies, and soil testing. Some additional uh, action to promote sustainable land management at the national level includes providing risk insurance, for example, conversion or retention premiums, insurances, etc improving market infrastructure and access, that is for ecological labeling and biomarkets, improving access to machinery and improve community collaboration to reduce labor intensity using things like food for work or cash for work schemes and reducing perverse and adverse incentives. For example, reviewing fertilizer subsidies and harmonizing intersectorial planning. Moving on to examine necessary action to promote sustainable land management at the international level, the following can be done by policymakers to promote sustainable land management. 
These include putting land degradation higher on the political agenda, linking climate adaptation and mitigation with SLM, adapting trade conditions and eliminating perverse subsidies in the agricultural sector, which are promoting unsustainable land use, and changing the way economic accounting is done. That means valuing ecosystem services within plans and strategies, such as natural capital accounting. And finally, opening up more funding mechanisms for SLM by including SLM into payment for environmental service schemes and climate funds, such as the Green Climate Fund. At the international level, there are efforts to achieve land degradation neutrality. Based on Sustainable Development Goal 15.3, over 120 countries have set themselves voluntary targets to stop and reverse land degradation. A reminder that SDG 15.3 states that by 2030, we will combat desertification, restore degraded land and soil, including land affected by desertification, drought and floods, and strive to achieve a land degradation neutral world. The definition of land degradation neutrality is a state whereby the amount and quality of land resources necessary to support ecosystem functions and services and enhance food security remain stable or increase within specified temporal and spatial scales and ecosystems. The land degradation neutrality framework means there is a no net loss of healthy land. Neutrality implies that degradation processes cannot be stopped completely, but can be counteracted by restoration of degraded land to achieve a net balance as depicted in the figure in the slide. The land degradation neutrality community has decided that there are three main indicators to measure land degradation. They are one, land cover, two, land productivity, and three, carbon, soil carbon stocks. Degradation occurs when a negative land cover change occurs and or the net primary productivity decreases significantly and or the soil carbon decreases significantly. There is a land degradation response hierarchy, which means that it's easier to avoid degradation than to reduce or reverse degradation, as shown in the figure in this slide. In this slide, we show the 121 countries who have already set their voluntary LDN targets. The LDN target setting program includes six areas of action. These are one, capacity building, two, improving access to soil data, three, complementing national and sustainability strategies, four, promoting balancing mechanisms and incentives, five, introducing or adapting land use planning systems, and six, cross-sectoral policy making, including the integration of soil conservation into agricultural policy. As recently as March 2019, the UN General Assembly has adopted a declaration for the UN Decade on Ecosystem Restoration, running from 2021 to 2030. This declaration stresses the importance of the ecosystem approach for the integrated management of land, water and living resources, and the need to step up efforts to tackle desertification, land degradation, erosion and drought, biodiversity loss and water scarcity, all of which are seen as major environmental economic and social challenges for global sustainable development. This declaration recognizes the important links between climate change, biodiversity and land use and highlights the importance of SDG 15.
Under this declaration, all UN member states are encouraged to foster political will, the mobilization of resources, capacity building, scientific research and cooperation, and momentum for ecosystem re restoration. They are also encouraged to mainstream ecosystem restoration into policies and plans, thereby creating opportunities for ecosystems to increase their adaptive capacity and opportunities to maintain and improve livelihoods for all. They're also encouraged to develop and implement policies and plans to prevent ecosystem degradation. They should build on and reinforce existing restoration initiatives in order to scale up good practices. The following two slides list further resources that can be referred to. There is also a script for this module. If you have questions or you require further information, please see the links included on this slide.